All right, guys, so I got something cool today. I actually just finished working on it, so this is like the intro video that's after the video that's before the video. Makes sense, right? So I got to work on the FG42. I got to take it all apart and mess with it and do stuff with it, and I liked it. So here's the gun. And let's get right into it. We have a treat. We have the FG42, or the visible FG42, since it's all taken apart here on my desk. A couple cool things to see on here. As soon as I figure out how to do my, uh, look, right here, you got the ejector, right? The ejector actually moves, spring-loaded, to facilitate the bolt coming in. And of course, you know, spring load the ejector so it moves up and out of the way. When the bolt comes back, the ejector comes back down and uh, ejects the round. We also have covers for the dust covers for the magazine housing here. Not sure why they didn't put a dust cover on the ejection port. Seems like a kind of a half-assed thing to do, but whatever. Uh, there is a trunnion in here. It's just riveted in. And I assume the barrel's threaded into the trunnion. Uh, a couple cool thing on this is actually the rail that's riveted up to the top of the gun. Uh, much like rails are now. You have your rear sight. Pull that up right quick. And to, act, to use the rear sight, press this in and turn it. Much like another gun that escapes me right now what that gun is. But it's pretty cool. Uh... Got the inside. Let's see if I can get a flashlight on this. There we go. Got the inside right there. You can see the uh, chamber area and the locking shoulders. The bolt rotates, of course, in the uh, in the locking shoulders. It's kind of like an M60, or the M60 is kind of like this, rather. Uh, basically, bolt comes forward. Bolt. The locking shoulders are straight up and down. When they're in the normal position, it's spring-loaded, so they're straight up and down. It's spring-loaded to this position normally. The gun and the receiver channel keeps the locking shoulders straight up and down. Cruises down the, down the uh, receiver and some channels right here in the rails. We'll call them rails. We'll call them channels, whatever. We'll call them channels. There you go. But it cruises down there. Once it gets to the area of the... Yeah, hold on. Once it gets to the area of the... Uh, trunnion up there you can see where it guides it and goes in and rotates and locks it until you know firing uh pretty big gas port on this thing i've measured it but there's my thumb for instance and so you can see it's pretty big a couple little threads on the barrel it's actually kind of an intricate barrel you got threads up here uh, a bunch of stuff threads onto i'll show you here in a second shoulder right there the little i assume this is an anti-rotation thing same thing back here, anti-rotation, shoulder, um, threads, and it comes back here. It looks like the barrel is staked in a couple places, and that's how the barrel actually sits still. Or that's how it's locked, I guess you could say. All right, so the bolt and carrier. A bolt and carrier, here's your, this is your semi-auto sear area. This is for your disconnector. This is your full auto disc, or your full auto sear area. Uh, not too complicated. Of course, it's all milled. You know, but that's that's what it is. Uh, firing pin just travels up and through the bolt. Oh, here we go. This is kind of cool. The firing pin actually is controlled by this little shoulder. It's kept. It's kept. Uh, it's locked into this little car into this little shoulder by the carrier. These two little prongs go up like an M60. When your bolt is locked, it allows the firing pin to come out. When it's unlocked, the firing pin can't come out because it's locked. It's to the rear with your carrier. So that's kind of cool. Like the M60. So now here's your fire control group in, in the uh, pistol grip. Ein foyer is semi. Door foyer is full. So there's your disconnector. And there's your main sear. Now uh, when you pull the trigger... Your disconnector goes up, your sear comes down. Now, I haven't quite figured this out all the way because I'm still kind of messing with it. But um, that's kind of cool. It's just a big chunk of metal in there with a couple springs. 
well, a couple chunks of metal with a couple springs. You pull this out and rotate it down and forward to go to semi. Basically, that reverses this and kicks it up this way. I'm thinking, if I'm not mistaken, in this position, your disconnector is actually out of the way of the bolt or of the carrier. That makes sense to me anyway. So it's, it's about like that. And of course, your full auto sear is right there. I haven't really experimented with it much to find out. It's a really expensive gun. It's a quarter million dollar gun, and I don't want to do anything untoward to it. Now, our recoil spring is a little bent, but it's still serviceable. So it's not like kinked or anything like that. That little tab right there goes inside the carrier right there. Of course, there's your gas piston right here. Pretty beefy piston. Well, your whole carrier is actually one gas piston if you want to look at it that way. Your carrier is pretty beefy. A little dished up front. I haven't cleaned it yet, so please excuse the mess. Uh, right here, this is your buffer. Basically, your recoil spring takes up slack, or takes up recoil, and it guides the whole mess into the buffer right here. That impacts, or should I say that? I should say the carrier bottom impacts this part on the buffer. And it's actually pretty stout. It's really hard to press, and that's by design. But it, when it's coming back in recoil, it, it depresses it at least a little bit. I, I don't know how much. You know, I'm not going to take it apart and shoot it, so who knows. But it recoils or depresses at least a little bit, sure. and that's how it works. So here we have all the parts that constitute the, well, let's call it the stuff on the barrel. Why not? I don't want to be all technical all the time. Uh, you got your muzzle brake, which is actually very effective. You notice on the underside, it's not drilled, not ported, however you want to say it. So the top side is with this little notch right here. And it actually, the gun does not rise at all, even in full auto fire. It actually has a straight back impulse. Really neat. Now this right here, this is just a keeper. Screws on. And your uh, flash hider screws on, or your muzzle brake, sorry, screws onto that. Kind of cool. It's got square threads on it, like a Thompson barrel. That's neat. Um, what goes on this little section right here, of course, is your bipod. All right, now this, what's next? is your little uh, front sight. You definitely need the front sight. Because, you know, that's, that's pretty important. Um, yeah, front sight. And that just goes on the little, that's pretty much all the stuff on the front shoulder right there. You notice this long protrusion right there underneath the front sight? That actually fits on there and prevents the whole thing from spinning. So that's pretty cool. All right, so you got this. This is actually the cap to your gas system. Screws right on here. This goes right here, and this goes right here. So it's like this. This is your gas uh, regulator, I guess you'd call it. Plus, well, kind of like that. Actually, let's see. excuse me. Kind of like that. There we go. It's hard to do this while I'm talking, filming, and stuff. All right, so right here, this is the important part. You see the little dot right here? That tells you. What, what your gas setting is. This is an adjustable gas setting, or does have an adjustable gas setting. And that is done with this little guy right here. You know, one, two, three, four, four gas settings. And there is your little notches that constitute your uh, gas setting. This little, that's kind of cool, actually. And that fits in there. Wow, that's a trip doing it on the camera. That fits in there like that. And this little keeper goes this way, and that holds your gas setting into whatever setting you have. Now, interesting thing, the keeper is locked in place on that. So it's just basically pushed on. This little notch, notch right here, the little bulge, actually goes onto this. So this is what keeps your gas setting keeper spring that's his new name that's what keeps it in place now this is of course your gas uh gas tube right here this goes inside where is it inside of here like that and is held in place by your gas keeper now interesting thing we said before the gas port on here is pretty decently sizable right 
Well, if you look, this is the one that mates to the barrel. Comes down in size, and then it comes through here. You see, what, this hole is nothing more than a spot to, for them to be able to drill the holes. Um, pretty cool stuff, man. Pretty cool stuff. This right here, this is the side of the gas cylinder or gas uh, tube, whichever you want to call it. And the way we can tell that is because the charging handle actually goes back and forth in that side. It is a reciprocating charging handle. It's married to the carrier. Now you do have some gas vents to vent off gas. And of course those coincide with the gas holes on there, the gas vents on here. That whole apparatus goes up in here, up in here. So this is the side, this is the other side. It would actually go in like that. And that's probably, yeah, there's a little notch right there for that. Actually, it's not a notch. There's that little uh, rivet right there, which actually keeps it from spinning. One of the things keeps it from spinning. That and your charging handle. But of course, the charging handle's to the rear. It's back here. So you need something to keep this from spinning any other time. And this rivet serves that purpose. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. What else have I got? Okay, so I've got the bayonet. This is a spiked bayonet because, you know, World War II, everything has to have a bayonet. So the cool thing about this, though, if you look right here, this is how you slot it on there. You press down, it goes in, and you have your bayonet. It's also reversible. So if you want to stow it, press on here, it goes in for the stowed position. The keeper comes out, and that's how it's kept. Uh, I, this thing is just stake the bejesus out of it might be screwed in but i kind of doubt it it's probably just there we go there's a good picture as you can see it's just cover staked underneath there is probably some spring oh it's definitely a spring and some other apparatus um there you go so that's pretty much the fg42 I mean, there's, there's, oh here you go magazine you know what that is about seven thousand oh, dollars there you go so i'm being real careful uh the whole gun by as it is, it's worth about a quarter million dollars. It's uh, probably the most expensive gun I've ever worked on as far as small arms. I've worked on bigger guns that are worth more, but this one's definitely the, the top of the cat when it comes to the small arms stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'll post it up later today, and you'll all go, ooh, ah. And then you'll know a little bit more about the FG-42. <laughs> oh, I'm a fan of this thing. <laughs>